As I fly over the winding canyons littered in bent and broken trees, I see the growing, towering outline of an ominous and eerie castle. I slow my approach, calming my wind rider, as I search for signs of life, but as I get closer, a dense fog starts to set in. Hey there, Salem! A voice echoes across the ghostly white brick. A familiar voice. It was Artemis, one of the best troll hunters I have ever partnered with, sure to be with her loyal cat, Shadow. Scanning my surroundings, I quickly pull up on my wind rider and head towards the origin of the echo. As I round the tower, I see Artemis standing at the entrance, waving. How are you, man? Artemis snarks. Nice to see you too, friend. I return. When was the last time we put our backs against a wall? Fighting that old demon Sailorn in Violet Hold. Aye, man, that was quite the fight. She reminisces, motioning towards a small hallway resembling an entrance. You said you would bring company. Where are the rest? Time is money, after all. Artemis steps aside to reveal the remainder of the group. Akasuki. He be the best front man in Azeroth, no matter the task. Artemis motions towards a large, pale orc with piercing blue eyes. He nods and continues sharpening his blade. Artemis continues, pointing to a towering yet friendly figure. This be Telemus. Whatever the injury, he will cure you. The hallway is small, even to a goblin like myself. Telemus seems to struggle to turn around, his horns scraping the ceiling. Let's keep the winds at our back and keep an eye on your step, Traveler. It's nice to meet you, friend, but I only see four of us, I say. A ghostly chill runs down my neck as I hear a whisper. You aren't observant, are you, Goblin? I jump around and see a hooded figure hunched behind me, blades dripping in poison by his side. I'm Sicarius, and since time is money, let's go. Sicarius motions to Akasuki. Akasuki stands up and turns to the door. Whoosh! It lurches open. The strange chill of a dark presence winds through the air. I look at Artemis, who for the first time in our friendship looks uneasy. She looks back at me. The spirits are with us, man. Akasuki turns the corner and charges forward, running straight at a ghostly figure pacing back and forth. This one is mine! He roars as he seemingly snaps his fingers and the Banshee falls under his control. Up the winding staircase they go as we all quickly file in behind them. Faint music begins to ring through the halls. A haunted opera chills my bones. I look to Sicarius, barely able to see him through his cloak, then over to Telemus, who smirks and starts charging forward. There is no turning back now. Passing three large busts, we enter a long corridor. Clack, whoosh, clack. Rounding the corner, I see six ghostly patrons surrounding Akasuki, all standing in what seems to be boiling death and decay. Shadow jumps behind one marked by Artemis. Sicarius appears next to Shadow, simultaneously backstabbing his target, all whilst Telemus channels his healing rain to protect us. It has begun. The patrons begin to fall one by one. We must continue. Akasuki demands, disappearing down a staircase. We move around the mezzanine of the ghostly opera, vanquishing any patron that stands in our way. However, something in the air still feels off. It's dark and heavy, weighing on us as we move. Tick, tick, tick. What was that? Telemus asks. We must keep moving! Akasuki yelled. Down the last staircase we go, finally reaching the stage. Get ready! And stay on your toes, Akasuki said, motioning towards a haunting figure at center stage. The curtain of the stage springs upward. Hello, 
everyone. Welcome to the show. My name is Barnes, and I will be showing you a tale as wicked as the rest, starring our two favorites, Elfira and Galindra. Barnes turns towards the five of us. Let's see if our brave adventurers have what it takes to fend off the powerful duo. <laughs> I look behind me to see who Barnes is speaking to. I guess this is what we're getting ready for, Akasuki. Huh, I joke. The most maniacal, darkest cackle I've ever heard erupts through the theater. A purple sphere appears above the stage, slowly lowering Galindra down. Elfira is not far behind, swooping around the orb as it lowers, landing on the stage gracefully with her broom. Hello, friends. Galindra and I must be off to see the wizard, so let's make this quick, okay? Elfira laughs as noxious purple clouds begin appearing around us. Avoid the energy clouds if you want to live, man! Artemis yells as she draws back her bow and lets loose an arrow. I harness chaotic energy in hopes of expediting this fight, but as I conjure my first collection of chaos, three monkeys join the fight. Together, minions! Let's eliminate these intruders! Elfira yells. The monkeys jump and instantly focus on Telemus. Akasuki looks towards the monkeys, conceiving death and decay where they stood once again. They quickly target Akasuki, who lets out a grunt. Attack after attack, Akasuki continues, finally receiving aid from Telemus as he maintains the attention of the assailants. Sicarius sprints behind the monkeys to make quick work of them, seemingly linking his attacks effortlessly, dropping monkey after monkey. Galindra and Elfira are starting to appear wounded and slow. Galindra, while enduring a barrage of attacks, looks Akasuki in the eyes and says, no matter your goal, this is just the beginning. You will fail. You will join us. Akasuki pauses, looks at Elfira, then Galindra. This would be a vacation from where I come, he says, as he raises his sword up high and strikes down at the heart of Galindra, seemingly hitting both simultaneously. The story of Galindra and Elfira has come to an end. Barnes erupts, accompanied by applause from what is left of the ghostly patrons. The adventurers may continue on their quest with what time they have left. Barnes motions towards a door at stage left that mysteriously starts to slip open. You may continue on if you wish, Barnes announces. Tick. 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 The darkness seems to be lifting slowly. Let's get a move on. If we want to be rewarded for our work, we must be swift, Akasuki demands, charging through the door. After working through backstage, we emerge back in the crowd. Akasuki amasses a group of patrons as I call down fire to help expunge the ghosts quickly. As the patrons fall one by one, a purple crystal becomes visible. It has pulsing electricity emanating around it. Sicarius appears next to it and starts channeling the electricity out of the crystal into his body. It courses through his veins, giving the palest of pale undead a royal purple tinge. That is the first of five crystals, Agasuki states. Sicarius, I need you to travel down the hall towards the Maiden. In the room before her, get the second crystal and meet us back in the main banquet hall. I'll be one with the shadows. Save some fun for me, Sicaria says as he vanishes into thin air. Artemis, carefully work your way down to the servants' quarters. The third crystal is hidden in the back. Avoid the spiders and the eggs. We'll meet you at his room, Akasuki remarks. Aye, I'll see you there, Artemis says and turns to walk away. Akasuki is a man of few words, so when he speaks, everyone listens. His words pierce through the air, cutting into whoever is nearby, assuring they listen and don't forget. The remaining three of us enter the banquet hall. There is a feast prepared, but the seats are still empty. A daunting, powerful, ghostly figure stands at the front of the room, 
and behind him, another purple crystal. Tick, tick, tick. Without hesitation, Akasuki emits a purple grip from his hands, garnering the attention of the ghostly figure. Without skipping a beat, the figure teleports behind Akasuki and garrots him. Telemus springs into action, healing Akasuki. The ghostly figure continues vanishing and appearing behind Telemus, Akasuki, and then myself, each garrot accompanied by an agonizing groan. This is taking too long! Where is Sicarius? Akasuki demands. On cue, the poison-drenched blades appear behind the figure. Ah, Moros, my old friend. It's not often you feel your own attacks against you, but you are losing your way with the shadows, Sicaria says while slicing his daggers horizontally across Moro's back. Moro's drops to the ground, looking back at Sicarius. You're almost out of time. He will stop you. Run while you can. Sicarius laughs, walks over to the crystal, and once again absorbs the crackling energy from within it. One left. Let's go, Akasuki commands. As we scale the castle, the words of Barnes and Morrows echo through my head. Who is this he everyone is referring to? I ask. Telemus, who has remained indifferent, looks at me. He is a construct, crafted by Medivh himself to safeguard all secrets within this haunted castle. He channels energy and will go as far as overloading himself to protect what he guards. About time you made it, man. Artemis yells from atop the stairs while petting Shadow. Shadow's a little worked up from the spiders. Tick, tick, tick. We're almost out of time. It's now or never, Akasuki says. For the first time, he looks at the group, assuring we are all ready. He turns back and starts walking in. Eradicate! Eradicate! The construct charges at Akasuki. Fists the size of Bane Bloodhoof himself swing blow after blow. Sicarius appears behind him, barely standing at his knee, and begins flashing his daggers elegantly. Artemis draws her bow, releasing arrow after arrow, aiming carefully at her marked target as Shadow leaps in to assist. I lean into my chaotic power and begin to fight. The construct continues, showing no sign of weakening. With a crack, he releases a ball of energy that plants right next to Telemus. It lets out a string of electricity, instantly connecting with Telemus, who quickly crumbles to the ground. Eradicate! Eradicate! The construct continues, weakening Akasuki while showing no signs of weakening himself. Protect yourselves! Telemus fought hard, but is no longer with us! Akasuki yells. I scan the group as everyone is fighting, and as I look to Sicarius, Another ball of lightning launches down towards him, immediately coursing electricity through his body as he drops to the ground. Tick, tick, tick. Hurry! Akasuki yells, looking over at Sicarius's even more lifeless undead body. I look to Artemis, who looks back at me. I see a look in her eyes I have never seen before. She looks afraid. Not once, while fighting demons, alliance, not even kings, have I seen fear in her eyes. But here, against this monstrosity, another ball of lightning drops out of the construct right onto Akasuki, coursing lightning through his body. Defeat him! Gather the final crystal and our reward awaits, he utters as he drops to the ground. The construct turns to Artemis and walks over. Eradicate! Eradicate! With a loud click, it cocks back its fist. You must be the one, Salem! Finish this! Artemis yells as the construct hits her body, launching her across the menagerie. No, Art! I scream as I watch Shadow run over to Artemis's body. I need to finish this. The construct turns toward me. Eradicate! Eradicate! As it slowly walks toward me, I fling chaos bolt after chaos bolt. 
it reaches me and stumbles to one knee. Eradicate, eradicate. As my final chaos bolt launches, so does a ball of crackling energy touching down next to me, coursing through me. <sighs> we were so close. Maybe next week? The air grows slightly warmer. <laughs> 